Hey everybody, Matt Ferry from Avid here at Sundance 2020. Once again, telling you about all the great stories happening here in Park City. One of those great stories is editor Rob G. Wilson, Robert Grigsby Wilson, if you may. If you may. If you may. Uh, here with a film called The 40-Year-Old Version. Tell us a little bit about that film. Well, it's uh, something of a hip-hop comedy. It's directed and starring by uh, Rada Blank, who uh, she is a uh, playwright, sort of down on her luck in the New York indie scene, and she's looking for... I think, she I think she found what she was looking for. Did somebody the say my name? The best. Two the best. Moscow mules in Have you? New York. Yeah. All right, now make sure you get the movie right. So, this is, so, so our movie is called The 40-Year-Old Version. It stars, the beautiful, it stars the beautiful and talented oh, Rada Blank. Oh, stop kissing my ass. You uh, already got the job. I know. She's, she's, she's the writer, through. director, star. She's the, the, the brains behind the operation. I'm just fortunate enough to be a part of the operation, and she is, uh, it's, uh, and uh, she is, she is a down on her luck playwright looking for a new outlet, uh, and not they, pornography, not, not pornography, no, uh, it's looking for a, a, a looking for a new outlet, and finds uh, finds a new voice for her creativity in hip hop, and so she, uh, so it's about her. Uh, struggling between her head and her heart about what's good for her career and what she needs for her creative expression. And it's a beautiful, touching, hilarious you film. You already got the job, Rob. I'm you already got the job. <laughs> I met Rob at the uh, Sundance Director's, Director's Lab, Lab yeah. 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I stepped out of the room for 10 seconds, and he completely destroyed my movie. Just joking. <laughs> um, no, it... we. He yeah. just did some things that I hadn't thought of, and I said I want to continue to work with this guy. Yeah. And it's we've made history. I yeah. well, maybe not. That's being a little dramatic. I know. But um, well, it's I, my purpose. You know, Rob also has a background in music, so just when it came to editing the film, he kind of understood that like there is a rhythm, there is a flow, and um, we had a great time. And it looks so good, man. Congratulations! You look so good. I can't shit. believe it. We're killing it right oh now. My this God, is amazing. It looks so good, and I'm not just me. saying that yeah, because I'm two Moscow mules in. And you know, <laughs> two equals four here in uh, Utah. Yeah, so I am lit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let you get back to your interview, Rob. You're amazing. Uh, All right, Rob. Hey. Where, where, where do we go from there, Rob? I don't know. That's basically all right. Cool. See <laughs> okay, so that's going to do it for here at Sundance. Uh, okay, so clearly if there's a sequel, you get the gig. Uh, hopefully. Uh, so tell me what it is. Uh, obviously, you had a great time with that film, but what is it you love about working in independent film? Well, what I love about it is you meet all these incredible voices. I mean, it, like, Rada is such a brilliant talent, and the place like Sundance can support uh, a fresh voice like hers to find a, a new outlet and find a worldwide audience here at a place like this festival. So I think she is just incredibly talented, and I just love, I'm so thankful to the festival to, for giving us a place to, to showcase her her skills and and our work together it's great so we've got a great summary of, of the film itself uh tell me a little bit about the uh production and post-production workflow well it was very interesting so rada's movie is shot on 35 black and white on an indie film budget so it's very hard to execute we had to edit the film initially off uh dailies recorded straight into uh the dit's setup from uh the tap of the the uh the, the dp's uh camera lens so I did an entire assembly with these really grainy, low-res pro uh, uh, proxies, and then my assistant, Sam Salvadon, had to come in behind me once four or five days later when the film scans actually came in, and he had to literally overcut, eye match every single frame of the film, picture and audio, and so it was it, quite a challenge, especially on an accelerated timeline for us to get here for the festival this year because we just shot the film in August so it's been a scream to the finish line and uh, I guess I should say Avid's tools were very helpful in the process. You don't have to say that but we certainly appreciate it. You know Rada talked about uh, your musical background and how that helped with the rhythm and understanding the pacing of the film. Um, in terms of audio itself do you any audio tools that you employ or do you feel like as, an, as a picture editor you actually jump in and do a little more um, of the sound design and sound editing than a, a typical picture editor might do? Well, I tend to try to, like, one of the things I really like about Avid is I try to keep all my work in the box because I think, I want to say in the box, like in the inside the application because it all the visual effects I need to do, all the sound work I need to do, I like to be able to manipulate it in the, uh, in the moment. But if I don't like it, I don't want to be off in some other application 
like having to re-render and re-export and doing you know all this extra work again. So what I really like to do is keep it all inside the suite. And so I do find myself doing a lot of sound design. I find myself cutting a lot of music. I find myself doing a lot of temp visual effects, the stabilizations, basically anything y you want to see in the finished product, want to see or hear in the finished product, you really want to give your director the opportunity to, to see and hear them in the moment so that they can judge them. And if I can't do that in my skill set, if the tool doesn't allow me to do that, then uh, I have a very hard time. So I, I, I think that it, it really makes for a more streamlined process if I can produce the results that we're hoping for right in the box in the moment. So, so you know, 40-year-old version already getting a lot of buzz here at the festival just early on. Um, you not only have that film at the festival, you also have a short here as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so the short film is called Little Chief. Uh, it's directed by Erica Tremblay. Uh, it is a film about uh, Erica is an indigenous woman. She's Seneca Cayuga. She grew up in Oklahoma on the reservation, and her mother was an elementary school teacher. And so it's sort of a a, a story about her mother's life, about a, a day in the life of her mother, an elementary school teacher on the reservation, and all the trials that come along with uh, working in that uh, at w working working there. Uh, I like. I think it's a beautiful film. It's touching. It's you know. A, a different change of pace than working on Rada's movies, so like I really just loved it, and it's it's just really sweet and really heartfelt and really a great love letter to her mother. So, is there any difference in your workflow or your process with a feature length film versus a, a short? I mean, you're always dealing with things like time. You always want to judge the audience's interest. You know, you like the audience's engagement. You're always dealing with the same kinds of things like pace and story and 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 so to some degree it's a question of you know how do you want it to happen how, like how much time do you have how, like and what is the pace at which things are moving I really uh, like sometimes it's different but it always sort of depends on the project you know it's really just depends from a technical perspective of like how complicated are we dealing with I mean her uh, uh, Erica's movie, Little Chief, was shot digitally. Rada's movie was 35 black and white. Uh, Rada's movie had its own technical complications. Erica's movie had its own technical complications. And you just have to deal with it as it comes. But I really just, I like working with different voices. I, I uh, really like working uh, like with fresh voices, uh, you know, filmmakers, you know, telling new stories. And it's really like, that's really my interest. So clearly you've been really busy getting ready for the festival. What do you have going on outside of Sundance? Well, I also have a film coming out uh, February 20th uh, called Goldie, also cut in Avid. It's a, uh, a, a really fun story. It stars Slick Woods, who is um, really famous for her modeling career. Uh, it's a uh, story about a, a woman from the Bronx who is struggling to make it, you know, make a career as a, uh, in a music video while also trying to take care of her young daughters. Uh, her young daughters, excuse me, trying to take care of her young si while also trying to take care of her young sisters. And so I. Uh, it's a it's another really original story. The director is a Dutch filmmaker named Sam de Jong, and uh, I got to really throw all the spaghetti against the wall, use every tool in the toolbox for Avid because we have speed ramps and slowdowns and blow-ups and all kinds of craziness in that movie, and I highly recommend it, too. It premiered at Berlin, screened at Tribeca, and is now uh, coming out on the 20th. So there you go. If you're here at Sundance, look for the 40-year-old version of Little Chief. After Sundance, Goldie. The editor is Rob G. Wilson, and that's just another great story that you'll find here at Sundance 2020. My name is Matt Fury. Stay tuned to the Avid Social Channels for more stories like Rob's.